What a mighty God we serve. Alleluia. What a mighty God we serve. Alleluia. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God. We serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. We serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore. Even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. We are serving him. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Alleluia, heaven and earth adore, even angels bow before him. What a mighty God we serve. Ancient of days, we worship you. The King of kings and the Lord of lords, we bow before you. The controller of time, we worship you. We thank you for all you've done in our lives since the last time we had an opportunity to meet. Thank you for your children gathering together in their various locations all over the world, particularly in Canada and America. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that in this year's convention, this very, very special convention, you will manifest your glory. Amen. In the lives of all your children, Father, do something special. Amen. Do something new. Amen. Let all their needs be met, Lord. Amen. And let there be unbelievable testimonies coming out of this convention. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. <clears throat> Today we will be looking at Galatians chapter 4. Even as we discuss the fullness of time again. I know we have shared yesterday during the Holy Communion service certain things, but tonight is going to be a very special night in the lives of all of you who are connected to us right now. Yesterday is to be taken as the eve. Today is a special day itself. We're reading from Galatians chapter 4, from verse 1 to 5, Galatians 4, from verse 1 to 5. And I read from the old King James Version. Now I say that the heir, as long as he's a child, differeth nothing from his servant, though he be lord of all. But he's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, 
made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. The fullness of time. As we mentioned earlier on, yesterday, uh, as we prepared for the Holy Communion service, God has a timetable for everything he does. Our God is highly organized. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, just to remind you of what we shared briefly yesterday before we go to the main message today. The Bible made it clear that God has a time for everything he does. And therefore, for any particular event, he has what the Bible calls a set time. For example, in Psalm 102, verse 13, Psalm 102, verse 13, he said, Thou will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her, yea, the set time is come. And in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 4, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, not partially come, but fully come. That's when the Holy Spirit came. Yesterday at the Holy Communion service, we discussed what happens when the fullness of time comes for a nation. And when the fullness of time comes for a group of people, like a denomination. But today we want to discuss what happens when the fullness of time comes for an individual? And I have the authority of my Father in heaven to tell someone among you that every major statement tonight is a word of prophecy to you whose fullness of time has come. So if you don't hear me say there is someone here, this, this, this is going to happen to you because daddy says every major statement of tonight is a word of prophecy to someone in particular for whom the fullness of time has come. Oh, how I pray that that someone will be every one of you. Amen. I'm going to take two examples from the Old Testament and two examples from the New Testament of people for whom the fullness of time came and what happened to them. So that you can then see what is it God intends to do in your life from tonight onwards. We start with Abraham. Abraham had heard God on several occasions. But when the fullness of time came for Abraham, certain things 
happened in a day. Number one, he had a divine visitation. Genesis chapter 18, from verse 1 to 14. Genesis 18, from verse 1 to 14. And so I am confident that there is someone listening to me now who is going to have a divine visitation tonight. The second thing that happened when the fullness of time came for Abraham is that God did something in his tent that he had never done before. Which is why I believe that in the home of someone where you may be now, God is going to do something he had never done before. What is it God did? God ate. human food. Totally incredible. Because according to Psalm 50 from verse 9 to 13, Psalm 90 from verse 9 to 13, God said, am I going to eat the flesh of bulls? Am I going to ask you for food? He said, if I'm hungry, do you think I'm going to tell you? But on this particular day, when the fullness of time came for Abraham, Abraham said to God, please come and eat in my house. And God said, fine. And it wasn't even as if the food was prepared already. God waited for the food to be prepared, and he ate. You see, when your fullness of time comes, God will break any rule Amen. in order to bless you. Amen. The third thing that happened when the fullness of time came for Abraham is that, of course, as usual with God, he gave thanks. He said thank you to Abraham after he had eaten. But you know that God does not have to say thank you to anybody. Because whatever you have, whatever you are, you got it from him. How can you expect God to say thank you for any food that it might eat in your house. When, as a matter of fact, he's the provider of the food. But when you read Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11, Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11, you will find in the case of Peter that after the Lord borrowed his boat, <laughs> And he's the one who made the tree from which the boat was made. After he preached in Peter's boat, he said, thank you. And you know what? A single thank you from the Almighty God is enough to enter your failure permanently. And another thing that happened when the fullness of time came for Abraham is that God changed all the prophecies that Abraham had had to a single decree. Because when you go through the scriptures in Genesis 15 from verse 1 to 6, Genesis 15 from verse 1 to 6, God I said to Abraham, look at the stars. Can you count them? No. Ah, so shall your seed be. Genesis 17 
from verse 1 to 9, Genesis 17 from verse 1 to 9, God made all manner of promises to Abraham, so much so that Abraham fell on his face and laughed. But we all know God never lies. According to Numbers 23, verse 19, Numbers 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Once he had made a promise, you can be sure the promise will come to pass. But you see, promises or prophecies have a time frame for them to come to pass. But a decree has no time frame. The day the decree goes out, that's the day it's going to come to pass. For example, Genesis chapter 1, verse 3. Genesis 1, verse 3. God didn't say, and one day there will be light. No, he issued a decree. Let there be light. And immediately, there was light. So on the day when the fullness of time came for Abraham, in Genesis chapter 18, verse 10, Genesis 18, verse 10, God said, in nine months' time, Sarah shall have a son. I wasn't there, but I can guarantee it that Sarah became pregnant that night. Because God said, by the time of life, nine months, your son will come. When your fullness of time comes, God will demonstrate his almightiness. Because when Sarah heard what God said and began to laugh, and God said to her, do you know who is speaking? Is anything too hard for me? And according to Jeremiah 32, verse 27, Jeremiah 32, verse 27, he is the God of all flesh, and there's nothing too hard for him. So I'm rejoicing with someone today whose fullness of time has come. The almighty God will prove his almightiness in your life. Amen. And what you considered impossible will be possible before the sun rises in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll take another example from the Old Testament. There are so many of them, but I, I just decided to choose Elisha. In 1 Kings chapter 19, from verse 15 to 21, 1 Kings 19, from verse 15 to 21, while Elisha was busy in his farm, he didn't know that God was already discussing with Elijah about him. He wasn't aware. He woke, warm, woke up one morning, a farmer. But before the evening was over, he has become a son of the prophet. But then it was just the call that he got that day. He had to wait for, if we are to believe Bible scholars, for some three and a half years before the fullness of his time came. And when the fullness of his time came, certain things happened. Number one, his years of loyal service was rewarded. For years, he has been serving Elijah pouring water on his hand. 
And you know what? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 41, Matthew 10, verse 41, you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will get a prophet's reward. So I am confident that those of you who have been serving my God faithfully without a private agenda, this very night, your reward will come. Amen. When your time is fully come, as in the case of Elisha, any prayer you pray, no matter how hard, no matter how difficult or impossible, even for you to believe, some prayers are, I mean, that you find even difficult to utter. But when your time is fully come, any hard thing you ask for, you receive that same day. Because in 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15, 2 Kings 2, verse 9 to 15, the Bible made it clear that when Elijah asked Elisha, ask what I shall do for you before I be taken away from you. Son, your day of reward has come. What do you want? And the young man said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Elijah says, you have asked a hard thing. But the boy got the hard thing that day. I want to appeal to you, when it is time to pray, tonight, don't ask for something small. Ask for something extremely great, something so big that it will take only God to bring it to pass, and you will get it. Amen. When the fullness of time came for Elisha, another thing that happened was that his ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders began the same day. The same day. I mean, for example, in 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 24, 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 19 to 22, or rather, rather 2 Kings 2, from verse 19 to 22, we could include to 24, but let's leave that out of it for now. The same day that Elijah departed and Elisha got his request granted, he destroyed the curse that had been on Jericho for generations. Just by speaking a word. Incidentally, when you study Elisha, and I'm sure you've heard me say, I spent three years studying Elijah, <laughs> and I've been studying Elisha since then. Because every day I discover something new about this great fellow. If you study him very closely, you discover that he performed 40 miracles compared to seven performed by Elijah. And when he died, he had only performed 13. So, so his dead bone completed the job. Do you know when your time has fully come? Even when you die, miracles will still continue through you. Let me go on to New Testament, because I have two examples there, too. The first fellow I want to consider is the man 
at the pool of Bethesda, that man who had been there for 38 years, but when the set time came, number one, he was singled out for a miracle. There, there was a multitude there. But he was the only one who was healed. The only one who was healed. You read the story. That's why I believe my daddy says that every statement coming today is for one particular person for whom the fullness of time has come. He was singled out for a miracle. Why? Because in Romans chapter 9, from verse 14 to 16, Romans 9, from verse 14 to 16, God made it clear, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. God said, that's my choice, my prerogative. I can do it. That's the, and that's the way I want to do it. And during this year's convention in Canada and America, God wants to do something peculiar. He wants to have mercy on someone. He wants to have compassion on someone. He wants to single out someone for miracles. When this man's set time came, 38 years of failure ended in one day because he had failed again and again and again trying to get into the pool for healing for 38 years. All of a sudden, he found that he could not even succeed without even making an effort. I mean, the story is so rich that this man didn't even pray. He didn't cry out. I said, Jesus, I'm here. It was the mercy of God that located him. Oh, wherever you are today, may the mercy of the Almighty God locate you. Amen. And suddenly in your life, from tonight onward, Philippians 4.13, Philippians 4.13 will become your theme song. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that I will never fail again. It wasn't at eight years of failure alone that ended. It was 38 years of defeat after defeat. Because he said, while I'm going into the pool, another got in there before me. He didn't fail on his own. He failed because someone made it impossible for him to succeed. But then, who can defeat the one that God has decided to favor. Because in Romans chapter 8, verse 37, Romans 8, 37, the Bible says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Uh -huh. If you are the one for whom the fullness of time has come, there's nobody who can ever defeat you again. I take just one more point from him. Because you must remember this particular sermon for the rest of your life. When the fullness of the time of this man came, he was moved to a higher level. He had been at the level of the sick. He had been in the level of the failures, because he wasn't the only one who had been failing. 
He was moved out of the level of the defeated. He wasn't the only one who, have, who had suffered defeat. He was moved out of the level of those who were always going forward and backward, going forward and backward, going around in circles. Suddenly, he became someone who could go to church to go and share testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, this coming Sunday, you will testify. Amen. Let me take just one more example from the New Testament. And it's a, it's, a, it's a testimony of somebody that I'm sure you know very well, but you wonder his choice. Quite an interesting choice. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 1 to 20. Mark 5, from verse 1 to 20. It's the story of the madman of Gadara. Uh, some of my children say, you love that story so much. I say, yes, sir. There's a lot of to learn from this young man. You see, the Bible does not tell us how long this man had been tormented by the devil. We were not told. All we had was that he had a legion of demons Oh, this man was supposed to die in bondage, die a failure, die defeated. But then the fullness of his time came and certain things happened. Number one, if you read the story very well, God crossed the sea to meet him. <laughs> and did they attend a crusade? It was locked down <laughs> in the graveyard. He wasn't even expecting a miracle. He wasn't expecting that all of a sudden light is going to shine into his darkness. And there are some of us who are, might be listening to me now, we know what it is to be tormented by forces of darkness. But do you know what? When your fullness of time comes, God we walk on waters to come and give you your miracle. Because in Matthew chapter 14, if you read it from verse 23 to 34, Matthew 14 from verse 23 to 24, the Bible said God, Jesus Christ dismissed the crowd, sent his disciples to go ahead, I will join you. I want to go and pray. By the time he finished praying, there were no boats left. But the Almighty God said, even if there be no boats, I will suspend the law of gravity. I will walk on water to go and give to my beloved one the miracle they need because there was a storm already. Good news for someone who is going through a storm right now. Because the fullness of your time has come. Whatever it will take God to reach you, he will do it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, number two, which is easy to see, he got a deliverance that was practically reversing the irreversible. Anybody who had had a, 
opportunity of casting out a demon out of one fellow will tell you that a demon is bad enough inhabiting a human being. And anyone who has been set free from a demon before will tell you, ah, it wasn't a joking matter. But this man had a legion. Bible scholars differ on what a demon or, or what a legion of demons means. Some say 2,000 demons. Some say 6,000. Even if it's just 1,000. That was to make sure that this fellow would remain bound forever. But who can hold in bondage the person that the Lord of hosts has decided to favor? Because according to Psalm 24, from verse 7 to 10, Psalm 24, from verse 7 to 10, the Bible made it clear. That when the Lord of hosts is coming through, all gates, all doors must lift up their heads. I want to agree with somebody today. Every door that I've been shut against you shall be opened tonight. Amen. Every force that has been responsible for you not succeeding will move out of the way tonight. Amen. And then not only was he set free, which is the crucial point for the fellow whose fullness of time has come, is that his destiny was restored. When you read this story, by the time you get to the end of the story, this fellow was born to be an evangelist. He was born to advertise God. But the enemy took him over, so he became an advertiser of the devil. As a child of God, you are to advertise God. People are to look at you and see the goodness of God. And because of you, we want to serve God. But there might be one or two of us who find it even difficult to open our mouth to say, I'm a Christian, because people will ask, where is your God? Because of the situations in your life. Maybe physical, maybe marital, maybe material, maybe emotional, maybe in your place of work. I have good news for you now. Tonight, your destiny will begin to find fulfillment. Amen. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 13, Isaiah 43, verse 13. The Almighty God says, There's no one who can deliver from my hand. But I can deliver from anybody's hand. He said, When I want to walk, who can hinder me? The Almighty God is going to begin to walk on behalf of someone, and there'll be no more hindrance in your way. Yeah. And according to Joel chapter 2, from verse 23 to 27, Joel 2, verse 23 to 27, the Almighty God promised that he will restore all the years that the canker of worm had eaten. And he promised again and again, he kept on saying, and my people shall not be ashamed. Amen. When your fullness of time comes, restoration comes, shame departs, glory takes the place of shame. And let me begin to round up. I know some of us will be asking the question, how do I know 
that I'm the one for whom the fullness of time has come. Oh, as simple as I will be, you will know that from the moment I started preaching, something is already saying, ah, no wonder this convention is different because it is meant for me. Ah, maybe this is why I don't have to travel to be at the convention. God has brought the convention to me in my home. Oh, so God, the one who will walk through the waters, walk on waters, cross the sea to reach someone has crossed the waves. And he's sending a message all the way from Nigeria to me in my city room. I must be the one. I suppose you are not sure. I still have good news for you. Because according to Psalm 115, verse 3, Psalm 115, verse 3, the Bible says our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. And then Daniel chapter 2, from verse 20 to 21, Daniel 2, 20 to 21 says, He changes times and seasons. I like that. It can change summer to winter. It can change winter to summer. It changes times and seasons. And don't let anybody tell you that, oh, that only happens in the olden days. He <laughs> still does it today. You've heard of my testimonies. I just decided that I'm just going to give you the word straight so that you'll be able to remember this summer. But you remember when I went to Denver, Colorado in January? You know what that means. And I prayed, God, do you want me to go? And he said, you go. I know how cold that place will be in January. He said, go, I will go with you. And I was in Denver, Colorado for days. And people were wearing t shirt in January in Denver, Colorado, because it changed the season. I left, I think around 5 o'clock in the evening. By 7, more than 10 centimeters of snow had fallen. And in case you do not believe that of Denver, Colorado, phone your friend, Pastor Stephen Rutherford. I was with him this last January. And he will tell you, my God did it again. Before we arrived, <laughs> the temperature was freezing. We landed, and God changed the temperature again. He changes times and seasons. So what are you saying, sir? I am saying that if you read John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11, John chapter 2 from verse 1 to 11, it can change not yet to now. Because when the mother of Jesus Christ came to him and said, they, they have no wine, he said to her, woman, what have I to do with you? My time has not yet come. It's not yet time for me to begin to perform miracles. The fullness of time is yet to come. But that day, for the bridegroom and the groom, I mean, the bridegroom and the bride, not yet became now. Are you saying there's something I can do to make sure that tonight will be the fullness of my time. Yes, that's what I'm saying. 
What is he about? I can do, sir. Oh, read Matthew 15. From verse 21 to 28. Matthew 15, from verse 21 to 28. A woman came to Jesus Christ and said, have mercy on me. I need a miracle. My daughter is grievously vexed of the devil. The Bible says Jesus didn't answer a word. She kept on crying. The apostle said, Lord, send this woman away. She's too noisy, disturbing us. Jesus Christ said, I'm not sent but unto the lost house of, of Israel, lost sheep of the house of Israel. The woman kept on crying. After some time, she said, she kept on crying for mercy. She came, worshipped at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have mercy on me. That's all I'm asking for. The Lord said, I can't give the bread of children to dogs. So I know I'm a dog. But I'm not asking for the bread. I'm asking for a crumb. She got what she wanted. You know what happened that day? The time for the Gentiles had not yet come. The time for the Gentiles came later on in Acts chapter 10 when God sent Peter to the house of Colinius. That's why Jesus Christ was saying, no, 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 it's not time for miracles for you yet, woman. You are not of the house of Israel. I mean, you remember very well, when God was sending Peter to the house of Colinius, Peter resisted. We can't take miracles to them. They don't belong to us. And God said, the time for the Gentiles had come. What I call clean, don't call unclean anymore. This woman brought the future to the present. Yes, I know my time hasn't come. Yes, I know I see I, I'm to be regarded as a dog. But I'm not living. And that day, her fullness of time came. May I encourage you tonight that you don't pray casually. You don't pray for five minutes, ten minutes, and leave. You're not going anywhere. You are locked down in your home. Why don't you take the whole night and hold on to God and say, Lord, you control times and seasons. The fullness of my time must come tonight. It will answer you. It will honor your faith. As for those of you who are not yet saved, ah, the Bible stated clearly in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. He said, This is the day of salvation. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. This is the day of salvation. The next convention is going to be in a year's time. That is if the Lord doesn't return before then. But today is the day of salvation. So if you have not yet given your life to Jesus, do so right now. I want you to bow your head where you are. I can't see you, but the Almighty God can see you. And cry to him and say, Lord, save my soul. I know this message is for me. Let my salvation be now so that the fullness of time for me can be now. Bow your head and talk to the Almighty God. And the rest of us who are already saved, please intercede for all those who are crying to God for salvation now. Pray that the Almighty God will save their souls that he will have mercy on them, that his blood will wash away their sins, and that he will give them a brand new beginning. Pray for just one minute, and I will pray for their salvation too.
Thank you, Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to thank you once again for your word. I want to thank you particularly for those people who are surrendering their life to you now. Father, please receive them today. Amen. Save their souls today. Amen. Wash them clean with your blood today. Amen. Write their names in the book of life today. Amen. Receive them into the family of God today. Amen. Lord God Almighty, from this moment onward, any time they cry unto you, answer them by fire. Amen. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I want to rejoice with those of you who have given your life to Jesus. Please make sure that through your pastors or through your friends, one way or the other, you let me know that you have given your life to Jesus so that I can begin to pray for you. Now, for the rest of us, I could list prayer points for you one by one. Oh, pray for this. Pray for that. But I want you to pray only two prayer points. Two. Number one, you should thank the almighty God that he spared your life to this moment. That he kept you alive to hear what you have just heard. Thank him for it. He deserves your praise. And then number three, or uh, number two, you hold on to him. I say, Lord God Almighty, I'm not going to let you go until you assure me that the fullness of my time has come at last. That's all. If you can just get that assurance from him that the fullness of your time has come, everything that I've mentioned earlier on will become your portion. And before the sun rises, you'll be singing a new song. And now I'm going to pray for you in advance before you now settle down and begin to talk to the Almighty God. Shall we pray, please? Ancient of days, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the one who is, the one who was, the one who is to come, the one who is from everlasting to everlasting, the one who controls times and seasons, the one who can change not yet to now, the one who can change no to yes, the one who has the power to bring the future into the present, I thank you. I thank you for this very, very peculiar Holy Ghost service in this very, very special conventions of Canada and America. I ask Lord God Almighty that you will please do what you told me, that every major statement that has been made is a word of prophecy to someone for whom the fullness of time has come. I'm asking my Father and my God that you prove your almightiness in the lives of all these, your children, that as they cry unto you today, the fullness of time will come for each and every one of them. Yes. And that very, very soon, I'll be hearing a catalog of mighty testimonies yes. happening in the lives of these, your children. Yes. Please, Lord, let it be well with them. Amen. Grant their request. Amen. And let this be a day they will never forget for the rest of their lives. Amen. And I'm praying, Lord God Almighty, that in your infinite mercy, you have great mercy on Canada, 
on America Amen. and put an end to the plague. Amen. Let this virus move out of the way. Amen. And as it moves out of the way, Lord God Almighty, let your children begin to prosper like never before. Amen. Restore everything they have lost Amen. and just let it be well with them. Amen. And I pray that they too will remain faithful to you. Amen. They will remain loyal Amen. so that every hard prayer that they may pray tonight will be answered immediately. Amen. Please let it be well with them. Amen. And I pray that together in your kingdom, we'll be there to reign with you. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Good